Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Lewis Hatch here, and this episode is going to be around building your confidence. So the reason why I wanted to touch on confidence was because it is such a big topic, but also such an important area for not only athletes, those in sport, but just everyone in general. We're constantly seeing, and I feel at the moment, confidence is at an all-time low, especially in young people. I've done talks and seminars in in young people sort of in sport and, and in schools and even in sporting situations, in academies, there are so many young people that are, if you ask them a question, they're unsure what to say. There's this this delay in waiting to make sure they're saying the right thing and maybe being seen as not knowing the right thing and getting things wrong. And that's come up in many conversations with athletes on the show about not having the confidence to fail and that fear of failure, the comparison of others. So I really wanted to touch on perhaps where some of that low self-confidence is coming from, why we should be trying to build confidence, what is confidence and where does it come from? And then finishing off with some exercises and tools that you can use in order to build your own confidence. I think it's worthwhile me noting before we start my personal journey with confidence. And I've done talks, done seminars, I've been on podcasts where people have asked me about my own personal journey in in sport. And many people, I even had a talk the other day with a business where they had a question came forward and said, where do you build this sense of confidence from? And I kind of stopped and had to take note and really think about the, the answer because I could give a really cliched answer and it's and, and maybe some of those cliches will be in this episode, but there was a, a real understanding and, and a note that I made mentally of I was never the confident one. I was never fully confident in what I was capable of. I was a very unsure young kid. If anyone had asked me to step forward, I would always take a step back. It took me a while in order to break out of that and sometimes perceive confidence in a different way or in different scenarios, whether that's good or bad. It meant that I was building the ability to be confident. It was not a natural thing for me. So I wanted to kind of have that as a precursor before I talk about many of these things. And and I think the first note I would make is that confidence is genuinely a skill that you can develop. And it's a consequence of many different things that I will touch on. But it is it is something you have to work on. It is something that you really can work on if you feel like you don't have it. And if you have it and you feel like you have it, then you can develop it and you can strengthen it and you can maintain it. And definitely through having the awareness of it, that will, through many different studies and examples that you can see in life and in sport, where having high levels of confidence can equal better success and better outcomes, favorable outcomes for you. So I just wanted to start that off with a bit of a precursor as to my own personal journey. I was, I, like I said, I was never really this self-confident kid. And and even now I, I wouldn't regard myself as confident. And well, I, I would I would definitely say I'm confident in certain areas, but that's through hard work and working at it, like I've said. But there are areas where I'm not so confident and, and I'll touch on that as well. But yeah, it, it is a journey. So wherever you're at, just perhaps give yourself a break and recognize that that journey is not a certain t- length of time. Your confidence can maybe turn up in a matter of of hours, days, weeks, months, and years. So don't feel like it has to come at a certain time or a certain pace. And as long as you're working at it and working at the areas to improve it, then that's good enough. And, and you'll see the, the rewards eventually, I have no doubt. So Real quickly, what is confidence? Confidence, if you want to look at it from a definition point of view, confidence is defined as trusting in one's ability, capabilities, and own judgment. And there will be many different 
uh, formats of a definition of confidence. And again, there'll probably be a, a element of context into where you get your confidence from and, and how confidence is defined. But if you really think of it, it is, it is that, that trust in your ability, your capabilities and the judgments that you're making. So where does it come from? Where do we get our confidence from now? I There's a range of areas you might get your confidence from your experiences. You might get them from moments where you've had a challenge, you've overcome something, you've succeeded in something. Maybe you've had a negative experience, overcome that and, and come out the other side better for it. And that experience will give you the confidence when you move into a new experience and maybe one that is similar. So that's an area where you might find your confidence come from. Another one might be that sense of getting out of your comfort zone. There'll be so many people. I know a lot of people who do cold water immersion. Cold water immersion is is the physical stress that's put upon your body and the mental stress of, of getting into that cold water because it's something that you don't want to do. It's really out your comfort zone. But that stress and that overcoming of that stress and getting out of that comfort zone gives you a sense of confidence that then people are able to apply in many different areas of what they do. So it could be life, sport, professionally, personally, anything. But that sense of accomplishment, overcoming and getting out of that comfort zone can create that level of confidence through those experiences. You might get your confidence from other people, people saying things about you, people uh, who have said things in the past, the flip side of that, you may lose your confidence depending what other people have said about you. Um, and I'll get on to why that is also a something that perhaps we do not want to focus on. But if someone has said something that's nice about you and has given you that self self confidence, so in sport, it might be a coach that has said something really good about you and has praised you and you hold on to that. There's an incredible stat about young people that it takes 30 positive comments to overcome one negative comment. And I've mentioned that in previous podcasts, but it is it is scary to think that that many comments of positivity and praise take are needed in order to overcome those negative comments. So recognizing when you have that praise, maybe writing it down, just putting it somewhere so that it shines and it might be a, a quote that you hang up on your wall and that will allow you to have that confidence because when people say good things about us, we feel good from it. And another area where you might get confidence is from perhaps an inner dialogue. So self-talk. And again, this self-talk can be both positive and negative. But really, if you're using, you hear a lot of athletes and I'll touch on some of these skills in a second of positive self-talk and, and mantras and and affirmations being used as ways in which we can feel confident going into a situation. So mixing all of these together, they're going to really help you build your confidence and, and ultimately having that awareness around them is going to really allow you to have that confidence. So I have I think I mentioned in a couple of podcasts previous that I'm com currently in a performance psychology master's degree and there's some really interesting studies in that area of literature and confidence comes up quite co quite commonly because it is such a big indicator for success in athletes and in, in people who are in high performance or trying to perform in an area, whether it's business, the arts uh, and sport and, and again in life. But there are psychological skills in which we can use to our advantage and studies are showing that that athletes at the higher end, these elite athletes, they use psychological skills to a high level and they can be measured. And they, and just a few of them are relaxation, imagery, and imagery you may have may think of as visualization, but imagery brings in all of the senses rather than just the visionary sense of it and just seeing. Um, Self-talk, so again, pretty self-explanatory, and goal setting. So for their relaxation, imagery, self-talk, and and goal setting. So a mix of those, maybe even using one of them, has shown improvements in confidence, really through diminishing anxiety. So if we think of being confident, what we're also thinking of is reducing anxiety. So anything that can allow us to reduce anxiety will hopefully and 
ultimately bring higher levels of self-confidence. Because if we can be in a situation where we are less anxious, that is pretty much leaving the way for bringing out our confidence. We can feel more comfortable in a situation. And when we do that, we essentially become a more authentic version of us. We're trying, we're perhaps thinking logically, we're, we're not so stressed and we're not thinking uh, as illogically and emotionally in a situation compared to when we are calm and, and less anxious, that confidence will shine through. So you can work on each of those skills. You can work on a blend of them. And again, relaxation could be it could be yoga for you. It could be meditation. It could be going out for a walk. It could be a workout, that a relaxing workout that helps you get out of that stress state. But ultimately knowing why you're using that relaxation, it could be deep breathing. Deep breathing has shown huge signs of reducing that anxiety, uh, both uh, cognitive and your somatic anxiety, and being able to, to reduce that feel of worry um, is going to allow all of that overall anxiety to to drop down and that confidence to come through if you're looking at improving your your imagery your visualization let's just say they're, they're going to tag along together really but self-confidence can come from seeing yourself achieving the outcome that you want that scenario that you're going through putting yourself in that place what does it feel like what does it sound like who's there what's the surrounding what speed are you doing it at all of these images that you can run through your mind and you can do that sitting in a quiet space, ideally where there's no distraction and you can really focus in, hone in on the feeling, the sensation, the sounds and build a sense of what it's like and, and put yourself in that situation. Even look at yourself from a third person view. Are you viewing it in your in a, in a first person point of view or are you looking at it from a third person point of view? Really immerse yourself into that experience to fully to fully embody it and that will bring confidence with it if we're looking at self-talk what are perhaps some of the things that you are telling yourself it could be things as simple as i got this and i am strong i am confident it could also be a mantra something that you like it could be from a film it could be from your own personal mantra um, in my journal mind strong i look at building mantras as ways of using them in performance in your life. Uh, I also talk about having a performance mantra and a mindful mantra, one for sort of in the moment, in a performance when you need it, or perhaps one that you need to trigger some relaxation and, and some self-confidence in yourself away from those performances. So knowing what words are gonna be helpful for you, it could be performance-based cues, could be something that you use to to help you with your technique and what you're doing but allowing yourself to maybe not overthink it so you want to try and keep them simple so that you can remember them but also impactful enough so that you either consciously or subconsciously know what they are about and and know the frame of mind that you want to get into i always say if you're trying to build a mantra you want to bring emotion with it so if you are to say a mantra then understanding what it feels like what emotions are linked with that mantra to build as high a level of confidence as you can using it so you don't want to make the mantra so complicated that you're trying to think parts of it because in the moment you may not have enough time to use that mantra and it, you want something that can have this emotional impact for you as, as quickly as possible and then goal setting that is quite simply self-explanatory i would i would guess but if you're setting yourself a goal then you're kind of carving a path in which you want to take you maybe it, it can narrow your focus and you can start to see where you want to go and even just by simply narrowing that focus and having a better understanding of of what you want to achieve will bring that confidence with you if we're if we're not setting any goals and we're not really sure what we're doing you may feel that underlying self-confidence diminishing because you don't really know the direction that you're trying to head in and put blending all of these together bringing in the imagery the relaxation self-talk and goal setting they can be super effective tools to use but they do take practice to practice them over and over again again studies showing that elite athletes are are doing them 
less consciously, but they are doing them because they've practiced them. They have done them repeatedly over a span of time and then less sort of non-elite athletes don't use them as much because they haven't had as much exposure to them. They haven't used them as often. And then as you sort of move up and progress, you use them more and more often. So that is a little bit of understanding of where it might come from, where your confidence would come from. And I think it's quite important to understand, does your confidence stay constant once you start to develop it? And I would say and argue, no, it will fluctuate. There's also going to be elements where you're not necessarily going to feel confident in certain areas because confidence, or if you want to think of it as self-efficacy, it's specific to what you're putting it into. So if I give you an example, I, I will be confident driving a car right now, but because I've I've learned to drive a car over a long period of time. However, I won't feel very confident in driving a or riding a motorcycle. Not that I particularly have the urge to right now, but I don't have the experience, nor the knowledge, nor anyone telling me I'm good at riding a motorcycle in order to give me that confidence. So I'm going to feel less confident in an area like that. So you can put that in any other area of your life. So you might be wanting to give a presentation, you might be wanting to perform a new skill in what you do. There's, you have to accept that, that you're not going to be as confident in those certain areas. And that's where I would encourage you to enter into a beginner's mindset. So once you understand the areas where you are confident, recognizing the areas you want to build your confidence, once you're there, be okay with entering into a beginner's mindset, trying to drop the ego, knowing that it's going to take time to build confidence in that area because you have to establish capabilities, trust in yourself, maybe some experiences. And then over time, you'll start to see that confidence go up. I'm sure there's many people out there who drive a car right now and can think about what it was like getting into a car when you first started. I remember literally thinking I was trying to drive a spaceship because it was so different. It was so new. And also there was, there were some consequences with it. Getting out onto a road is, it's dangerous in its own right. Um, and you build that confidence when, when you start to do it more P pretty simple, literally practice brings that confidence. I think that is something I haven't mentioned just yet that, that practicing all of this, that, the confidence that you get from practice, knowing that you've put in time and effort, knowing that you've you've done the work, that can give you confidence. Quite simply, that can be enough to give you confidence because you can feel valued in yourself because you have set aside that amount of work. So simple practice, that can be enough to build your self-confidence. So again, situation specific, knowing when uh, when you're perhaps confident in certain areas, perhaps when you might need it in others. And you can identify that in any part of your life and recognize what, what can you do about it? Where can you, where can you improve it? I think it's, it is worth noting, understanding what your controllables are. So as I mentioned that if we can reduce anxiety, we can increase confidence. Obviously with that increase in anxiety, we're going to reduce our confidence. And anxiety tends to come around from areas that we are trying to control that we can't control. So noticing what your controllables are for you are super powerful ways of improving and developing your confidence. And you really might be having expectations of yourself that are maybe not good for where you're at right now. And that could be an expectation of being confident in an area. And like I said, not having the skills, the knowledge, the experience in it. Or it might be expectations from others. It might be what people, you're, you're perhaps afraid of what people think about you. You're, per, you're I mentioned about what, what other people say about you as being a big impact. That's something that you can't control. So if it is negative, go through this simple process very simply. Can I ask yourself, can I control it? If you're if you're finding a barrier in your in your self confidence, and something that you're coming up against, ask yourself: Can I control it? 
If yes, then do something about it. That's something you can put into action to get better. But if it is no, then you're going to have to accept it and move past it and then move on to something that you can control. And there's really only two things that you can control. And that is what you think of yourself and the expectations that you have of yourself. And you can expect yourself to work hard, be a good person, the mindset you have um, and the type of person that you want to be. But past that, you can't really control. You can't control what other people think of you. You can't control what other people expect of you. You can't control some of the outcomes that you have in life. And once you accept that, that will hopefully reduce your anxiety and allow you to move into a more confident place because you're starting to then gain control of things that will have an impact for you. So things that you can use to build your confidence okay, I'm focusing on what other people are thinking about me. I'm listening too much to that. That can't help me. I can't control that. But I can control going into practice, putting in some parts of my practice that are going to develop this skill, regardless of what other people are saying about me. I'm going to be this type of person because I feel this is the best version of myself, regardless of what other people say about me. I... uh, and you start to you start to build this better inner dialogue once you are aware of what you can and can't control and how it can affect your confidence. So that's quite a nice exercise and simple strategy of recognizing when that anxiety and where is that anxiety coming from that's getting in the way of your confidence. Can I control it? If yes, take action. If no, accept it. And, and my last real final note on, on confidence is we never really lose our confidence. Our confidence kind of gets lost and, and hidden in a fog. And that fog is many different things that are happening in everyday life. And our goal is to try and reconnect with some past experiences, our most authentic self to clear that fog, allow the clouds to clear and for that true confidence to come back through. Because all it's happening is these experiences that are negative and we're perceiving to diminish and and quiet our confidence are just getting in the way. And just by taking a moment and through some of the exercises that we'll talk about, you can start to clear the clouds, you can start to redefine or reconnect with where that confidence used to be and bring it forward so that it can shine through. And there will be moments when you will have confidence and this is going to lead nicely into some of the exercises that you can use in order to discover, find, uh, establish, and then build your self-confidence. So one of the ways that you can do this is looking at past experiences. And there's a few that you can do here. The first off would be discovering an authentic version of yourself. Now, this could be a real happy memory. So think of a time, it can be as far back as you want it to be, but think of a time when you're you're most happy. And don't only just put yourself in that memory. It could be a holiday. It could be at the park with friends. It could be maybe a photo of a time that where you were truly, truly happy. Picture yourself in that moment. Picture yourself right there, right then. And now start to describe some of the emotions that led with it. It might be emotions of safety. It might be fun, excitement, caring, included, competitive. It could be a range of emotions that you may be feeling. And list them down, write them down if you have to, write down the memory if you have to. And that description that you're you're bringing out there is you at your most authentic self. And it's just a simple exercise to reconnect with your most authentic self. And this is one of the first exercises that we do in the MindStrong journal and the MindStrong course and process is reconnecting with those happy memories. So, so do that, recognize where your authentic self is what it looks like what it sounds like maybe even look at yourself in a third person what does that person look and sound like and i'm sure that if it's a happy memory it's going to be a confident memory as well because you're going to feel that sense of self-confidence is where our true happiness can come out happiness and confidence they come together hand in hand when we're confident there's a high chance that we're happy 
And if we're happy, there's a high chance that we're confident. Linking in with that, perhaps in a more sporting or performance-based context, put yourself in one of your best performances. Think about a moment where you were truly untouchable, where you had such success. And, and I would say success, not as in perhaps the outcome, but it might have been a day where you were truly giving your best and you did your best and you felt you achieved your best. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go first place. It, it can be a moment where you gave everything and you you it was a culmination of perhaps a range of trainings that came together and it was just a brilliant day. So recognize that performance, similar process. Think of it in your mind, describe it. What does it sound like? What does it smell like? What does it taste like? And then think about some of the things that you were telling yourself. So this is where we start to link in maybe a little bit of mantras with it. So what were some of the words and affirmations that you were using that made you and, and perhaps best describe that best performance that you were giving. Write them down, have a look at them, maybe give it some time and there might be some more words that pop up, but you might start to find a clue as to what sort of mantra that you were telling yourself in that moment. So you can use them and you can develop a mantra that you perhaps use as a performance mantra. So the next time that you go into a performance, you can use it and you can have it as a secret weapon for a moment when you're not feeling as confident. I have my own, I have my own performance mantra that I will use in moments. And when I'm feeling like I need to gear myself up, I need to enter into that com confident version and competitive version of myself. But I also have a mindful mantra that I have that keeps me grounded. It keeps me as humble as I can away from a sporting context or a, or a high performance context. So look at what you've created there in both those happy memories, the, those best performances, and see if there's not only your authentic version of yourself, but this, the, this understanding of what a best performance looks like, the best self of you, the most confident version of you looks, sounds, smells like, and, and acts like, what's the energy coming out from that person? Is it, is it, high energy? Is it calm energy? Is it strong energy? And that is going to be something that you can describe and, and keep a hold of. I'm also a really big fan of using meditation as a way of understanding the story that we are telling ourselves. So very often confidence comes from a story that we're telling ourselves. Now, there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance, and that's probably a whole podcast in itself. But the idea that the story that we are telling ourselves is just a story, but we are in charge of creating that story. And using something like mindfulness meditation allows you to just sit with where your mind is at right now. It's a skill in itself and using it as a way of just listening to the story that you're telling yourself. And more often than not, you can see whether that story is true. You can see whether it's kind, whether it's timely. And once you start to listen to that story, you can then start to either reframe it. You can then perhaps start to rewrite that story. But we can't build that story. We can't change that story until we become aware of it. Like any of this, we can't change our self-confidence until we either accept, acknowledge, and become aware of the fact that we have lost our self-confidence and we're trying to change that story line that we're telling ourselves. So using, using it as a tool to see where your mind is at in the present moment. Now, you will develop that by just perhaps sitting, doing meditation on your own, but you can then start to build that skill that when you find yourself outside of or away from the mat or off the cushion, whichever way you want to look at it, when you're perhaps in the moment and you're feeling less confident and you're feeling that anxiety increase, by simply building the awareness and building the skill to have the awareness, you can start to catch yourself when you're using a perhaps more negative storyline and something that will be hindering your self-confidence. You can start to be aware of it and then do something about it. But if we hadn't built that skill to be aware and build that awareness, then we wouldn't be able to stop it in the moment. We wouldn't be able to catch ourselves saying those things to ourselves, which are going to diminish our confidence and, and 
perhaps lead us towards a more negative outcome that we don't want. So using mindfulness, using meditation as a tool in order to build that confidence, build that, an understanding of that storyline that we're telling ourselves to then develop our confidence and allow that those clouds to clear, that those clouds are that storyline. And once we become aware of the clouds and we see the clouds, we can start to move them and get them out of the way. So yeah, if you haven't started meditation and any practices like that and or given it a go, then there's actually a meditation that we have on the Sport Yogi YouTube channel. I'll leave a link in the show notes for that. And it's around finding your confidence. So it's about five minutes. It's not very long. It's actually taken from the Sport Yogi app and one of the meditations on there. Again, if you want to go over to the Sport Yogi app, there'll be links in the show notes for that. And you can go and use the app to develop your practice of meditation. And we are always going to be adding and developing that app and the meditations on there. So if you want to go and try out those exercises and, and those meditations, then you can either go to YouTube, like I said, or head over to the Sport Yogi app where there's a, a much vaster range. Uh, and, and that's really all of the exercises that I would encourage. There's plenty that you can do, but hopefully this episode has given you some tools, some ways in which you can start to think about your confidence, perhaps maybe changed or triggered something that maybe gives you a new perspective. This could have been a much longer podcast for sure. There's so many areas that you can go into confidence and maybe I'll develop some more in the future. If you want to reach out um, with any questions around confidence, then be sure to head over to the website lewishatchett.com and for the podcast lewishatchett.com forward slash podcast and just reach out. You can find me on Instagram at Lewis Hatchett and also over on TikTok at Lewis underscore Hatchett. So wherever you are, wherever your best platform, reach out. And if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them. And the last thing I would mention is some of these exercises that I've been talking about, they're a part of the MindStrong journal process, uh, which we have and we're about to release it. The site is being built and we are about to to release the first hundred of those. Uh, they, they are there's only a hundred at the moment, and if you are interested in sort of in finding that inner confidence, that authentic confidence of you, there's a range of exercises that will allow you to do that and then build an understanding of of where you want to go with with what you're doing as an athlete. And we define an ast- athlete as someone who is striving to better themselves. So that can be in sport, it can be in music, can be in business, can be in everyday life. Ultimately, we just believe in being a good human and a great athlete. So the MindStrong Journal will be available pretty soon. There's only going to be 100 to begin with. You can head over to lewishatchett.com forward slash MindStrong to register your interest, and then eventually they'll be available to buy on there. But that process is just all about discovering your inner authentic confidence so that you feel unafraid to fall because you have the skills to get back up. So that is everything for this episode. Again, reach out if you do have any questions and I will see you guys next time.